Gribos, and welcome back to downloadable content. It must be Tuesday because it's Mod Showcase Tuesday! And before we get started, I just wanted to remind you that we're trying to get to 150,000 subscribers by Christmas, and I need your help. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do so now. It's the best time to do so. I know that we can hit this go. We need about eight thousand more so let's get on this so all of the scripted mods we're going to be taking a look at today have all been created by the man the myth genix and in order to get those you have to join genix's discord and go into the beta section but don't worry i will link that in the description so go there to get these mods and i would say install all of these scripted mods manually do not try to auto download these ones you need to install scripted mods manually for the time being. All right, I said, now let's get on with the showcase. The first mod we're gonna take a look at today is the legendary Yamato. And yes, this does work with Huge Honor's Sheath framework, which is optional, but I strongly recommend getting it. So right now I have the Yamato stored in my inventory. So I hold the A button near my chest, go into this little weapon section and select the Yamato. We can then equip it on our person. So I like doing it on my left hand side. Just look at it right there in all of its glory. Finally on Nomad, we have the glorious working Yamato by Genix. And using sheath framework, we can quickly unsheath it. But if you do it like that one, it's gonna be backwards. So when you sheath and unsheath, I would recommend holding it like this one then we can easily unsheath it like that and be ready for combat. This Yamato has all of the working moves. However, I will warn you right now that for some reason, sword beams seem to break it. So I don't recommend using sword beams, but everything else is fair game. Like this, I think this one's Judgment End. So basically you unsheath and sheath it real quick while holding the grip and trigger at the same time and go boom, boom, boom. So wherever you're kind of like looking, that's where it's gonna, you know, attack. Die, birds! It's more effective against the creature. Like, let's say this guy. Ah. I shouldn't be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, bud. Don't move. <laughs> so, this one really comes in handy. It's a very powerful move. Then we have the anime slash of it all. So, basically, if you're holding down the A button, the spell use button, basically, it's gonna turn this one into a blade that can cut through anything, but technically won't have collision. Wah! So he's cut through. Now when I sheath it and release the spell use button, we'll do what it needs to. You can really set up some cool shots with this one. However, I do wish it could freeze them in place when you do that because the enemies still move around. It would be awesome if I did like a quick unsheath while holding the button and if it hits them, they freeze in that pose. And then when we sheath it, then they die. That's similar to how Judgment's End Cut works on the PC. Basically, you hold down the trigger and spell use button and the grip at the same time while unsheathing to get this effect with all those lines. And normally on the PC, when that happens, it freezes them. So let's try on a couple of these goobers. On guard. So I have three goobers on Nomad and let's do a quick unsheath. So you see how they freeze like that? I think it would be really cool with the anime, you know, slice it off and also made them freeze. That's yeah, just a suggestion, maybe even an optional suggestion. But now my Nomad brothers, we can finally do this. And of course, don't forget that the sword is super amazing and sharp and you get better while you're, you're using it. And what I mean by that is each kill makes the handling of the weapon a little bit better, which is awesome. It has motivation. So that's what the blade can do. But let's talk about the sheath. While holding the sheath in one hand, if you use the trigger, you will dash where you're basically looking, which is cool. So I can go really high up and we can also dash through things. You see this mound right here? Normally this is a solid obstacle. Well, not to the Yamato, lady dudes. <laughs> oh no, it stole the sword though. Gen X, it steals the sword when you go through things. Not a problem because I meant for that to happen because when you put this away in your inventory, even if you lose your sword like so, re-equip it in your inventory and you will get it yourself a brand new Yamato. And then you can also fire a Mirage Blade by just tapping the spell use button. Wherever you're kind of looking with your head, that's where that's gonna go. So that way it gives you some range combat. Isn't that right, Fred? You don't stand a chance against the legendary Yamato! Moving on, we have, well, a passive spell that's technically like a spell you have to activate, but hear me out. It's Zendatsu, finally on Nomad. 
So Zendatsu is a spell that you'll see right up here, but we should also have access, if we go into the book and go into mods, you'll see Zendatsu right there. Let's select that one and I'll show you how I customize it. I like having no blue tint and no electrodes, but I still like it to use it in slow motion and to have it as a spell. So here's what happens. I go to select Zendatsu, I'm gonna cast it and we should experience a blue tint real quick. That's to let you know that it was casted. And now the only way for me to show you this is by actually doing it. And remember, educational purposes only. So I'm gonna need this little meatball guy right there. Hi, meatball guy. And this is the perfect time to bring the Yamato back. Let's unsheath the Yamato. And here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna go into slow motion, like so, and cut along the middle. That is Zendatsu. So if you really wanna make it feel like Metal Gear, you can leave on the electrodes because, actually, let me show you the electrodes. Let's go back to the book and make sure that's off. So now when you get them, they should spawn a nice spine-esque thing. So we can grab that guy like so, and you can break it in your hand and heal yourself. Like this. There you go. So that is Zandatsu. Remember, use with caution. Up next, we have an insane mod that I love using, especially in live streams. It's the Supernova. So the Supernova is obviously a spell. Go to your spell wheel and find yourself the Supernova. What I love about this one, it does a crazy amount of damage and looks cool and it has its own custom hand pose. So when you hold down the trigger to cast, look at that, I feel like Dragon Ball Z Frieza. Sorry, Planet Namek, it's been nice knowing you, Cast. Just look how awesome that is. You could also use telekinesis to grab it, like so, and you could toss it while you're still grabbing it. So let's send it back to the PC universe. All right, there you go, PC. You know what, it kind of looks like there's two suns now. Like it's like a Star Wars thing. It's pretty cool. Let's get a volunteer right now. Yeah, there you are, my friend. It's time to get you for some the educational stuff. So bring him into the air like so. Then, cast the supernova right on him. It will disintegrate them right into that thing. But I would warn you guys, if you're gonna be using this one, just cast only one at a time because <laughs> this thing will crash your game. So let's just take that one and uh, cast it here. Oh, no crash! Now, what I really love doing with Supernova is casting it into this Play-Doh-like ocean because the water actually makes it look really cool when it hits. Take a look at this. Cast, and now toss it into the ocean. And let's just wait for it. You'll see, when it, when it actually hits the water, that's when it looks cool. It's not traveling that fast. It's fine. Have some patience. There you go, look. Look at it, it like floats. I'll, I'll show you in the water. And jump in this water, splash! There it is. You see it? It's about to hit the ground. Wait, it's about to hit the ground with me in it. Is that gonna be a bad thing? Up next, we have invisibility. An obvious one. All you have to do is cast it and disappear. You don't know where I am. I could be anywhere, but I'm, I'm still here. Still me. So this is great for dungeon stealth runs. So let's try it. So here we are in the first part of the outpost, and we should see some little goobers, which is great. Let's cast invisibility. Now all they'll see is this floating sword. Just look at this, this is fun. I'm invisible, they don't know. I could do anything to them. I could steal that sweet roll, and you'll see. <laughs> Wait, what? I have your sweet roll. What are you attacking? I'm invisible. You're not supposed to attack me, I'm invisible. Can they see the sweet roll if I eat it? I ate your sweet roll, it's gone. Oh my god, I think that was it. I really like this one because you can feel like a ghost. Oh, I'm a ghost. I'm haunting you with breakable stools. Yeah, so invisibility rocks. Moving on, we have Armament Hockey. Of course, it's a spell, but we go into our spell wheel and select it right there. It looks like a little purple fist. And we can select that in both hands. And then what you do is cast it and make sure you have it on. You can then unselect it and use other spells still on fire, but you, you know, don't have to unselect it. This enables you to do a well, really cool hand-to-hand -hand combat. Just like him. Hey, bud, turn around. 
Yeah, there you go. So he's gonna swing at us, but we have Armament Haki. Oh, I hit my throat cut. We have Armament Haki, so we can really get in there and use our arms now as weapons. Block, punch and face, punch and face. Oh no, wait, what? Armament Haki, what are you doing? Gen X, I think Armament Haki doesn't have damage modifiers. Gen X? Okay, well, I um, maybe not this one. Sorry, back into the ocean. Man, that mountain looks really far away. If only I had a quick way of getting up there. Well, I do, because up next is the explosion spell. This is a multi-purpose thing, because of course you can make things explode when you're casting, but if you want to be like our boy Bakugo, it's really simple. Cast with one hand in that direction, and we go up. So if you think about it, and you put your brain to use, you can boom! Yeah, we can fly around. And wherever you're aiming your hands, that's where you're gonna go. Up, down, left, right, sideways, you name it, you can do it. And this does wonders against the NPCs. Hello, friend. I don't think so. Explode. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Get back up. I wanna do it one more time. For me, using the explosion spell is so anime. I love reaching them into the sky like this and then just casting on them for like a... I do wish we got a spell like this where I could lift them in the air like Frieza and then bring my, you know, fist together with the trigger and then he just blows up. Why can't we have that? Genix, can you give us that? Come on, Genix. Just give it to us. You know we want it. Our penultimate mod today is the dash spell. Found in your spell wheel, it is this little purple looking guy, and well, you cast it to dash, wherever you're looking. It's kind of like using, you know, the Yamato's like uh, dash ability. You can no clip through things. If I was like, oh man, I don't want to use the door. Don't have to use the door. Oh no, it didn't render. Oh my God, where am I? I'm in the upside down nomad universe. Okay, don't do that. Just use the door. Let's look at Dash's combat prowess. So if we were in a fight, I can go back here and really cover some distance. Oh man, I went through the floor though. <laughs> Be careful of that. Let's just undo that one. You know, I'm still getting used to it. I'm not like a super protagonist yet. Basically what I'm saying is be careful where you're aiming. Oh God, that's all right. Dash in the sky and then, oh, dang it. Dash it to the sky. Now where are you, sir? I'm gonna get this right. Sky dash, slow motion, plunging attack. Oh no, how could you dodge that? I had gotten it right in everything. Whatever, plunging attack now. Yeah. Now I'm all sorts of enemy. Our final mod to take a look at today is one I'm so happy is working on Nomad. It is Death Beam. Death Beam is a spell that you'll find in your spell wheel looking right here. Now this one you cast a little bit differently. If you just use the trigger, your guy will just point their finger and be like, he went that way, so don't do that one. You actually do the grip first to summon the beam, and then wherever you're pointing, you then, while still holding the grip, press the trigger to shoot your butt. It goes wherever your finger is pointing, but that's not it. If you are also holding the grip, and then hold down the spell use button, then do the trigger, it will explode wherever it's shooting. So you can be like, I can destroy your entire mountain. You can also go into the book, and under Death Beam, you can increase the damage of Death Beam itself, and also increase the vitals damage multiplier. So if you hit them in the head, right now it's gonna do four times the amount of damage of 40. You can also increase the explosion damage. So let's crank that up to 20, and yeah, let's really crank this stuff up, even the radius and force. So I've gone on ahead and lined the beach with some uh, contestants. So let's see if the accuracy is good. Just aim and fire. Yeah. <laughs> they wonder what happened to their friend, don't they? Well, we can do two. Let me as we hit you guys with the yeah. oh. I feel like I'm destroying damage. Well, listen, these guys, they had their chance, so I'm going to do a super version of it. Hold down the grip, hold down the spell use button, and then blow up the beach. Wow, that is supposed to force us shooting me back. Yeah, so, um,. You mess with explosion and explosive force, then well, you're really in for it. Well, my friends, that is it for this week's Mod Showcase Tuesday. I hope you had a ton of fun, and more importantly, I hope you download these mods. Remember, Genix's Discord is in the description section. Join the beta part of it, and you can download all these mods and make sure to install them manually. 
Another friendly reminder to subscribe so we can smash this goal and hit 150,000 subscribers by Christmas. I need your help, Eric. Don't let me down. But other than that, I'm the one and only Drifter from Downloadable Content, and I will see you next time.